Alright, we're going to go through the solutions to the solubility lab that we did the other day. And as a reminder, you want to take out your solubility rules. Um, up here, you have these are ions that are soluble in water. Okay, um, with unless some exceptions. And then down below, you have ions that are insoluble in water. Alright, so if we go back to our data here for just a second. Um, remember, the whole point that you had to do is that you had to write out net ionic equations for anything that had a precipitate. Okay, anything that was a precipitate means that an insoluble product was formed and we can write a net ionic equation. We're going to do one together then I'll show you the answer. So the first one we're going to do together is calcium nitrate and, cal and potassium phosphate. Okay, so I'm going to take you through all the steps and try to explain it as best I can. Now for our steps, if you remember, the first thing you have to do is predict the products of a double replacement reaction. And this is all in your lab handout for the directions. First we're going to predict the products. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to balance our equation. Okay, so we're going to get a balanced chemical equation for the double replacement reaction. So we're going to have potassium phosphate, which is K3PO4. It's aqueous, one, because it's soluble um, because of the potassium, or two, we know it was a solution. That's what everything we started with was a solution and was aqueous. We're going to combine that with calcium nitrate, which is CaNO32. Okay, now we got to predict products. Now, for those of you that are still getting stuck on crisscrossing and making sure everything comes out right, um, my suggestion would be to write the charges of those ions above them before you crisscross. So, for example, potassium is a group one. It's going to be a one plus. Phosphate is going to be a three minus. Now, you also may remember on your solubility rules, you're now going to have some access to more formulas. Here's your phosphate, okay, right here, which is a three minus. So. There's no mis reason we should be missing some of these now. Now, calcium is a group two. It's a two plus. Nitrate is a one minus. Okay, so now when we crisscross the products, I always just start with the first one. It doesn't necessarily matter. This is a one plus there. All right, so I'm going to pair up potassium and nitrate. They're each a one, so it's just simply KNO3. Now, we'll get to the states in a second. Um, the next one is going to be calcium phosphate. Calcium is a two plus. Phosphate is a three minus. So my formula here is going to be CA3. PO4 2. Okay, that's my calcium phosphate. Now to predict this, then we got to get it balanced. So I have a 2 in front of the phosphate, so I'm going to need a 2 in front of my potassium phosphate. Now I have 6 potassium, so I'm going to come over here and put a 6 in front of the potassium nitrate. Now if I go to the nitrates, I have 6 of them over here. Well, I get 2 for every compound in calcium, so I'm just going to put a 3 here, and that also I don't want to do that. My three here is also going to balance my calcium. So everything is balanced. So step one is done. Now, step two is to determine the states of the products. And that's either going to be aqueous or solid. And you use your solubility rules. So first, let's look at potassium nitrate. Okay, well, potassiums and nitrates are always soluble. Both of them are on this always soluble list. So my potassium, oops nitrate is going to be aqueous. All right, now for the calcium phosphate, on the other hand, well, if I come back to my solubility rules, and you're always going to have a rule for one. Calcium doesn't show up anywhere, but what I do have a rule for is my sulfates. Okay, I'm sorry, we're dealing with phosphate, my fault. Calcium phosphate. Okay, here's my phosphate. Most phosphates are insoluble, and calcium is not one of those exceptions. So therefore, my calcium phosphate is going to be solid. Now, I'm going to show you the work on this, and I um, will show you how to do this. The, what I showed you the other day was to split up every single one of these aqueouses in order to figure out two things, because ultimately you have to figure out your spectator ions and your net ionic equation. Okay, and that's the questions how they're going to be written on the quiz. It's going to say, write this, get, provide the spectator ions and write a net ionic equation for the following two solutions. Okay, and you're going to have potassium phosphate and, you know, other things. But, so anyway, but here's a trick, a shortcut. Your spectator ions are always going to be the ions that are in a solution on both sides of the reaction. So if you look here, you've got nitrate, it's aqueous, so that means it's going to essentially be crossed off on both sides. So one of my spectator ions should have been nitrate. Now, some people may have put the 6 out in front. It doesn't matter if you did or you didn't. It's not going to get counted wrong. Okay? The other one is going to be potassium because it's aqueous on both sides. Now, if I were to split them up, 
I would have ended up with six potassiums on this side, which were aqueous, six potassiums on this side, which was aqueous, so I would have got it crossed off that way. Same thing with my nitrates. Three times two is six, so I would have had six nitrates here, and there's six out front, so six nitrates here. So if you did the whole long version, you also would have got them crossed off there. Again, you can either put the six out front or not, it doesn't necessarily matter. Now my net ionic equation is every ion that is left. So I'm dealing with the phosphate, which has a three minus, and I need two of them, three calciums, which all have a two plus, and then the solid, which I never ever ever split apart. So my net ionic equation for this one should have been, let me scroll down here just a little bit, two phosphates, three minus, which are aqueous, plus three calcium two pluses, which are aqueous, and you're going to have calcium phosphate solid. Okay, and that's it. The spectator ions of my net ionic equation are the final answers. Okay, the final answers. And I know it can be tricky, I know it can be tough, but like I said, you do your double, if I go back to my steps here for a second, you predict your, your double replacement, your balanced reaction, same thing we've been doing in Unit 8. We simply put states on the products. Remember, the aqueous one is going to be the soluble. The solid is insoluble. Okay, so that's why calcium phosphate got the S was because it's a solid. Then you simply have to figure out your spectators and write your net ionic equation. Okay, so that is the process for how we do these. <clears throat> Excuse me, and again, here is, you know, that answer to that last one. So let me just show you the solutions to the rest of them and walk you through it, and hopefully this will help. Okay, so your net ionic equations for the lab, this may be a different order than what you had, but I'll cover all of them. And if you need to go back and re-watch this video, um, feel free to do that. I will be collecting your lab notebooks on Friday in order to make sure that this you have a net ionic equation and spectators for 12 different um, equations. So if you can't get it all down now, the video link will be in eChalk. Rewatch it and um, we should be good to go. Okay, so anyway, the first one where we had silver nitrate and sodium carbonate my insoluble product should have been silver carbonate and my spectators again which are the aqueous ones are going to be nitrate and sodium could have put the two there you could have not it also doesn't matter which order you put it in if you had sodium and then nitrate that would be fine as well and on the net ionics you have to put the charges and you have to put the states so it's two ag pluses plus carbonate gives me this silver carbonate solid okay all right, then the next one that I had was when we combined silver nitrate and potassium phosphate. Remember, where I'm getting these combinations from were the different ones on the side. Okay, so for this one, uh, silver nitrate and potassium phosphate, this was, here's my potassium phosphate and the silver nitrate. So this was this yellow solid that we formed. This was the one that turned bright yellow. Okay, that's the, the one that we're talking about right now. So for that one, my spectators would have been the potassium and the nitrate. Again, spectators are ones that are usually always soluble. My net ionic, silver is only a 1+, plus, so I needed three silvers plus a phosphate gives me silver phosphate solid. Charges, states, balanced, good to go. Okay, then I get to barium chloride and sodium carbonate. Okay, my spectators for this one would have been... Oops. Um, no, nope, not going to be right on it. Uh, chloride and sodium. Net ionic is barium and carbonate. Give me barium carbonate solid. Notice barium and carbonate are both two pluses and two minuses. So my formula is simply BaCO3 because they cancel each other out. Okay, number four, I was combining barium chloride and ammonium sulfate. So that would have been this white precipitate combination right here. Ammonium sulfate and barium chloride. Something was insoluble. So our something that was insoluble was the barium sulfate solid. My spectators were the chloride ion and the ammonium ion. Ammonium. Ammonia is NH3. Ammonium is NH4. Okay, number five, we had barium chloride and lead to nitrate. Our insoluble product that we got was the lead chloride. 
and then the spectators were the barium and the nitrate. Again, I did show split all this middle step is that I kind of keep skipping over is the big, long, completely separated ionic equation. And you don't have to show this every single time. If you guys write a balanced reaction and you can determine your spectators and your ionics, great. Some people are going to have to do this step every time. It just depends on what works for you. So more importantly, here is my aqueous compound. So my spectators were going to be barium and nitrate. My net ionic, and you have to put the two in front of the chloride because it's got a balance. It's not it's not Hunkel fiber. It's not diatomic chlorine. It's a two out front plus lead two gives me lead two chloride solid. Excuse <clears throat> me. Then we get into some of the other little bit tougher crisscrossing on certain things. But for this one, um, you've got barium chloride and potassium phosphate. So this combination was uh, right here, this white precipitate down below. So you got barium chloride and potassium phosphate. Our spectators are chloride and potassium. Net ionics is three barium two pluses, two phosphate three minuses, and barium phosphate solid. Okay, I think we get the hang of this here, hopefully. Um, sodium carbonate and lead two nitrate are going to form sodium nitrate and lead to carbonate. Spectators are sodium and nitrate. Net ionic is carbonate plus lead 2 gives me lead 2 carbonate. Again, 2 plus and a 2 minus, so they cancel each other out. Uh, the next one, sodium carbate, carbonate and calcium nitrate. I would skipped the big long middle step because once I figure out that this one is aqueous, that allows me to, that this one is aqueous right here, that allows me to split it up into my spectators and once I figure out that this one is a solid here, I can split it up into my net ionic. Okay, And remember, this would have been sodium carbonate and calcium nitrate. So that would have been this one right here, the calcium, oops, calcium nitrate and the sodium carbonate. So what we were looking at is this white precipitate right there. Okay, All right, and last but not least, I think we've got a couple more here. You've got ammonium sulfate and lead to nitrate. My aqueous ones is ammonium nitrate, so that is going to be my spectators. You don't have to put the twos in front of it. My solid insoluble product is the lead to sulfate, so that is what is going to form my net ionic equation. Oops, we're in a space there. Okay, my net ionic equation, which will be the sulfate, which is a 2 minus, plus the lead 2 that gives me lead sulfate solid. And last but not least, we've got lead 2 nitrate my and potassium phosphate. So my soluble spectators will be potassium nitrate because it's aqueous on both sides, potassium and nitrate. And then my net ionic is the combination of the lead 2 and the phosphate in order to generate that precipitate. Okay. Remember, remember your steps. You're going to have your oops, um, predict the double replacement, balance it, write the states, do your spectators, and then your net ionic equation. Okay. You will have your solubility rules. You will have a periodic table, and just do your best on your quiz. You will get the quiz back before we take the test on Friday. And if we have any questions before then, we can get them addressed. Okay. So you should put everything away except for something to write with and then the sub will pass out a periodic table as well as your quiz. Okay.